Michael Morris. I'm the superintendent of the Amherst Regional Public Schools, and thank you for watching Window into ARPS. Today, I'm thrilled to be sharing two of our new administrators in the district, and with me today is Victoria Stewart, our new athletic director, and Michael Gallo O'Connell, our new school nutrition director. So thank you both for being here. I know uh, for many students and families, athletics and food are two of the most important things we do <laughs> in the school. Uh, we serve an incredible number of meals each year, and um, you know, a high number of our students participate and value interscholastic athletics. So these are critical roles, and we're just thrilled to have you on board and thrilled to be sharing uh, both of you with the community today. So thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. And we are taping this right before students return, so uh, food service and athletics are kicking into high gear to get ready for that, and mm -hmm. I know practices are starting. Uh, but both of you have started, uh, officially starting your position uh, quite recently. So we're, we're catching you on the front end of, uh, of your tenure in the district, and so really appreciate you jumping in and, and introducing yourselves to the community. Um, so I'll start with you, Victoria. Could you share a little bit about yourself and how you became interested in working for the district? Yeah, so I'm from Amherst, um, and I love it. I grew up here, started here since I was, I've been here since first grade. Um, and then went to Fort River, the middle school, the high school, and then I stayed um, here for uh, college, and I went to UMass. So I just love giving back to the community. Um, even when I was in high school, I always, you know, enjoyed doing things for the community. Um, and now I'm back. And I'm excited to have my next job here at the high school. That's great. And, I, you know, it makes me feel a little old. I do remember Victoria because I was <laughs> teaching at Fort River when you were a student. You weren't in my class. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good moment for me. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you uh, became interested, particularly in working in the athletic department uh, or leading the athletic department in the district that you, you know, were a student in and were a student athlete uh, yeah. in the past? Yeah, I love giving back. And athletics, it just is an outlet for students. Um, they get to go to practice and kind of put everything what happened during their days like behind them. So I'm really excited to be a part of that. Uh, and I definitely think that it's important for high schoolers in particular. So yeah. middle school, high schoolers have a sport to go and um, give like any of their bad energy they had throughout their day off. Yeah, I know for myself, just on a personal level, I, I, part, I was a, a multi-sport athlete in high school and college actually. and. It was, um, as much as I did actually enjoy school and, 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 and fully appreciate the academics, having that balance was really important for me. I distinctly remember when I was in college, uh, there was one season where I was injured and I didn't uh, participate and I couldn't participate in athletics. And one might think, oh, you have all this free time, that'll be your best academic semester. And in fact, the opposite was true. Yeah. That uh, without that routine, that camaraderie of the team, oh, of being on a team, um, and that balance, uh, I, you know, it was harder for me. Um, and my teammates were sort of like, oh, you have all this time, you're not going to meets on the weekends. And, uh, but really, it, I think it, that kind of ideal of being you know, active with your mind, but active with your body, body is hugely important for, it was for me and I know for many yeah. of our students it is as well. And turning to you, Michael, tell me a little bit, of, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in uh, joining the district. All right, um, well, it's great to be here, Thank first you. of all. Um, so I am also a UMass graduate. And I um, lived in the area for a while. I moved uh, to Connecticut, opened a restaurant um, after I got married. And uh, we had our first child. We thought about like where we want to live. And uh, Amherst, for both of us, always kept uh, coming up. Um, so we decided we wanted to raise our family in Amherst, in the, in the Pioneer Valley. Um, and I've been involved with um, higher education food. Uh, for most of my career. Um, so I've seen in higher education food um, like a, a lack of um, food education, really. Like, so to have an opportunity to, you know, to correct that at an earlier stage in the elementary and high schools and middle schools is like really exciting for me. Yeah, thank you. How did you get passionate about food? I mean, clearly if you, you've dedicated your, in multiple parts of your career to, you know, nutrition and food. What was the, uh, what interested, what got you interested in uh, focusing your, your talents and your energies in, in that area? Um, I think that probably came from family. Um, you know, I had grandparents, my grandfather was a baker, uh, my grandmother uh, was an amazing cook, so that was kind of a source of comfort in our family and Sunday dinners every Sunday, so, you know, out of that, I, you know, that sense grew for me of like, you know, the importance of food and how it can, you know, add things to your life. Um, 
So, um, yeah, no, please take a drink. I certainly, while you're while you're having a sip, I definitely agree with that. That um, I think in, in many cultures, um, certainly in my family, food was a central part of when people get together. Um, yeah. That that you know, sure we could have fun without it, but it seems right. awkward not to. Uh, be sitting down and, and breaking bread together is a pretty central part of uh, many many cultures, many people's experiences in the past. Yeah. Once I started um, like working in the food service industry, like in, even in the beginning, like working as a like starting as a dishwasher and a cook, I also appreciated the camaraderie involved in it. Like it's a difficult work environment, um, but that also kind of like helps form strong relationships and you kind of have a bond, sort of like a family. So that's also attractive to me. Yeah, fantastic. So I'll stay with you, and then we'll go to Victoria. Uh, so you, you've been on the job not a tremendous amount of time, um, yep. but what have some of your impressions been so far? And what have you noticed as you've you know worked with met with staff, um, met with community members if they've come in uh, around the school nutrition program? Um, well, what I've my so far um, my impression of the staff is that it's a really dedicated staff. Like I've met with all of uh, all of my managers so far. And they were the ones coming in to me. Like, I, it's late, you know, to be starting off with the school year coming up. So they were concerned. They were coming in saying, like, hey, we want to make sure that we're getting the food in and make sure the kids are going to be okay. Um, so I was really impressed with that. Um, that's really something to, like, build on and, you know, grow. So yeah. that was great. We're very fortunate that way. And, yeah. and Victoria, things you've noticed so far? Yeah, so we had um, the other night on Tuesday, we had fall sports night. Um, and I got to meet all the fall coaches um, during the coaches meeting. The coaches are wonderful. Um, it's great to have great coaches because those are the ones that deal with the students the most. That's right. Um, and they're very dedicated. And then the community uh, I spoke to right after that meeting, and I said, oh, hi, you know, I'm the new athletic director, Victoria Stewart. And all of a sudden, like, I hear applause. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, like, made a little joke to the coaches. Like, where was that when I said, hi, guys, like, I'm the new athletic director. But, no, the community was awesome and welcoming. And then, you know, other staff members at the high school, um, you know, Robin, our nurse, like, everyone's been very helpful and, right. you know, helping me get through the days right now, these first few days. Great, great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, and I think that's really what, what new staff find when they come into our district in a variety of roles, that we're very fortunate to have a culture and climate um, where people are excited to have new people, they're excited for the new ideas and new energy they bring, and, and I think you know, you'll, you'll find that uh, it's not a one-week or two-week kind of thing that, that extends beyond. Um, you know, for you, Victoria, can you describe a bit of you know, at least what your vision is or how you feel athletics influences the student experience? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, so sports in general, I think it just builds a culture and it, like I said before, it's like an outlet for students. So I'm really hoping that athletics can change a little bit in terms of the whole culture. A lot of school pride um, and people getting really excited to come to games, um, the whole community being part of the games. You know, we'll have people that are in chorus concerts come sing, you know, maybe even the national anthem or maybe have a halftime show, whatever it is, you know, bring different people, a part of the community um, into athletics, yeah. not just the athletes and the student athletes and the student athletes parents, you know, bringing in, yeah. you know, just the students parents and people that wouldn't go watch a basketball game or a football game or even, a, you know, girls field hockey game, like go, go support. Um, because I just think it's really big to just support the community and all the student athletes. It is, and, and I think it's, it's one area, particularly because the games happen after school, where it can really bring that larger community feel. Yeah. You know, during the school day, there's certainly a community, but people are running off to their classes and um, doing different um, activities. But, you know, it is one place where the school, you know, of others, but, but one critical place where the school can come together and be supportive of their colleagues, their friends, and, and the entire community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think one of the things I noticed, too, is it, it's sometimes it's former players, former players' parents, uh, or caretakers. It really can be, bring in that whole community uh, feel, and it's, it's wonderful. And, you know, we have a uh, very supportive community of athletics in general. We, I know we offer many more sports than many high schools in our area um, because of the diverse interests of our students. And so um, I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited to go to some games in the fall. I really enjoy it when I'm able to do that. So thinking about nutrition, um, at a K, particularly at a K-12 level, how do you see that um, affecting the student experience or impacting the student experience? Um, well, I think that uh, I mean, it has a daily impact on everybody. You know, um, 
I think that it's um, <laughs> yeah, no, take your, take your time. You know, I would like to um, try and bring um, a restaurant quality food to our cafeterias. Yeah. Um, and I know that requires a lot of different moving pieces. Um, I would like, you know, so the staff, um, like, you know, recognize the staff as important stakeholders. Um, the managers, um, the people that are in the kitchens, and um, so how would you? Uh, let me ask a, a, a follow up to you, Michael. So, um, in terms of if if I'm a nine year old student and I attend Crocker Farm Elementary, mm -hmm. um, how you know how would the food that is served affect my day? Um, what's your vision of how that child is affected by the the school nutrition program? Okay. Um, well, I know that we have like a diverse student population, um, and I know that different schools, you know, have different, you know, kind of flavor profiles that they follow. Um, so I think it's important to recognize that um, and try and tailor the menu more to that, so that you know maybe some of the students will find food in the cafeteria that they're familiar with and that it's nutritious, but it's also like comfort to them. Um, I think that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. I know one of the schools, uh, Fort River, is starting a dual language program, uh, Spanish right, English yeah. dual language program, and they've expressed a lot of interest of uh, having that reflected on their menu, perhaps a bit more than it. You know, I think there's been strides made in the last couple of years, but particularly as they're making a cultural shift for students who are in the program or not in the program. But there's a lot more Spanish uh, yeah. language that's going to be spoken, signage that's going to be there, and, and they're seeing that they've expressed that. You know, the, the school nutrition piece can also be a place where that cultural work can happen. Um, yeah, I think that's very important. I think that really helps complete, you know, the mission in that regard. Yeah, thank you. So what are some, uh, I'll go to Victoria for um, the next question to start. What are some of the aspirations for your role and your department? In other words, what's the vision? What would you like to see? How would you know if um, the athletics department is uh, going on all cylinders and affecting that student experience in the way that you'd like? Um, I would like to see more girl teams. So there's de definitely an even amount of sports, um, but it's like JVA and freshmen. Nice. Um, you know, our soccer, our boys soccer team, they have a great turnout every year. It's awesome. You know, they have a varsity, JVA, and freshman team. I would like to see that um, across the board. Yeah. So it's going to start with the youth, you know, right. continuing them wanting to keep playing sports at a young age. And then all of a sudden the high school should it should happen for the high school so it's definitely going to take time i'm hoping that the high school will go and volunteer more yeah. with the youth programs and that will tailor you know the amounts and the numbers of attendance of student athletes um, in the future yeah i know it and i know one of the sports did an event last week like that and and you know if you're again i use my eight-year-old example if you're eight years old and you've got a 17 year old high school athlete that's going to be, frankly, more important than probably anything that people our age would say to them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because you see that role model, you see the, the jersey or the uniform, and people can get into that aspirational mindset, and that's, yeah. that's what we want our kids thinking. Um, and the there, kids, look yeah. they really look up to, like, these students, you know. Yeah. Um, kids at Fort River, Crocker Farm, Wildwood, yeah. they see a middle school, high schooler, and they see them playing on the field or whatever court or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh my gosh, I want to be there one day. And yeah. then they may even follow you to college. Yeah. And like, that's one of my proudest moments. Like, as playing at UMass, even I had a student that you know she's in the high school now, so I can't <laughs> wait to watch her play um, high school basketball. But she came to most of, maybe all my home games at UMass, which was great. So yeah. I think that's what we should go to. Yeah, fantastic. My like, daughter definitely agree with that. Really? <laughs> I have an eleven-year-old daughter, and oh. she like has had coaches that were on, you know. UMass or you know other teams, and she really looks up to them, and it, it does gives her a vision of the future of like yeah, role that's models. a place for me to go. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, it's actually a lot of research that I've read uh, a while back that said you know basically at 10 years old, having that clear aspiration, whether it ends up happening exactly the way you think it is yeah. or not, but actually having those role models and having aspirations, whether that's college 
you know, attending college or being an athlete has long-term implications of whether you're successful. In other words, we set self-fulfilling prophecies for ourselves, and we need to give our kids all the narratives. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they can do that, and they can be the, uh, the examples, the positive examples they see we can, and, and I think your point's really well taken. Yeah. Michael, thoughts about uh, your vision? You talked about it a little bit, but uh, your aspirations for food service? Um, yeah, well, um, you know, I'm, I think sustainability is a really critical issue right now. Um, I think that local sourcing is important um, as much as we can, you know, and then being creative with the food that we're getting in and make sure we're using it correctly and processing it and, um, you know, trying to increase participation rates so that, you know, we can have more room in the budget so we can bring in another person possibly and then, you know, we're getting fresh stuff and fresh vegetables every day from local farms and using that, um, I think that would, you know, would be my main big goal, I think. Yeah. So let me ask a question because I'm not as knowledgeable nearly, uh, you know, certainly as you. So we live in New England. Mm -hmm. um, our growing season's not quite what it is in other areas south and west of us. Yeah. Um, so how do, how do you maintain local produce given that we have a pretty lengthy um, and sometimes harsh winter, um, you know, and that our school year, the 10 months, at least four months of them are, are in winter. Yeah, um, so some of that comes down to like, I mean, really eating seasonally is important. Okay. So certain points in the year in the fall or in the winter, you're eating root vegetables. Okay. Um, you can also process things when they're in season, you know, tomatoes, um, you can, if you have the you know, equipment, you can flash freeze things. Yeah. If you have the storage space. So that you're creating your own, you know, frozen vegetables like flash frozen um, right. they'd use later or you know turning things into like a pesto basil into a pesto or right. things like that um, that's helpful because I've always wondered that question because even in local restaurants outside the schools you know they talked about you know farm fresh and then you know it's like 20 degrees out and snowing and I'm thinking yeah. I don't think the farms are yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah one of those two things probably <laughs> but I didn't dig it up that day but yeah I mean sort of things in root root cellars and yeah you know have enough to get through the winter because really it, if you are eating seasonally then you're eating root vegetables in the winter. Yeah, well that, that helps, um, that makes sense to me. So Michael, sticking with you for a second, what are some challenges that your department's currently facing and you know how are you looking to approach them? I know you've just started but certainly yeah. staff, uh, I'm sure staff as eager and motivated as they are have let you know some of the barriers that are going on right now. Yeah, um, so my initial um, challenge is just we have some vacancies in staffing, yeah. so I'm trying to fill those um, quickly. But I'd like to bring in like you know the right people, people that I feel like are invested, will be invested in the program, and will be willing to grow. Um, and the next, um, just I would like to build a relationship with uh, the managers and the staff, um, get them more involved um, in the process. Um, because they're at the front lines every day. So they, you know, if I'm telling them I'd like you to put this on the menu right. and they're thinking that's not gonna work or, you know, they'll do it, but they might, uh, like I'm missing out on their knowledge. Right. You know, and then maybe we come to a compromise somewhere in the middle. Um, no, that's, got, really that's important. What are, I mean, with some of the uh, laws and rules around school lunch, um, nutrition guidelines and things like that. Does yeah. that, is that, do you find that limiting? I know we're just starting in the role, but, or is that those guidelines broad enough where, you know, you do feel like your staff um, has a lot of flexibility? It, it is a challenge. Oh. Um, so, you know, right now uh, we're doing some taste testing with Project Bread. We're trying some different recipes for some breakfast in the classroom items. Right. So the chefs that we're working with, Chef Sam and yeah. Chef Jamil, who are fantastic. Um, they have recipes, and then they have to take the recipe and kind of fit it into the guidelines, which is possible, um, but it uh, it takes some adjusting. Yeah. So some people might know what not know what Project Bread is. So do you mind sharing a little bit of uh, at least your initial interactions with them and how they support the food service, the school nutrition program? Excuse me. Well, we um, received a grant from Project Bread. Um, that's helping us set up our uh, our breakfast in the classroom program. So they have a, a, a chef, um, Sam Micklin, that is working with us. And um, also we have uh, 
Chuck Jamil from uh, Amherst College, who's coming in and um, they're doing taste testing and they're uh, working with our staff, figuring out like which things are going to be possible for them to do. Um, and then, you know, we're just getting input from the kids. And we'll continue doing that throughout uh, the next few months. Great. So that once we implement the program, we'll kind of have a good idea of what what's going to work for them. Great. Anytime you need a, a, a taste tester, taste, yeah. you know where to find me. I just going to say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, seriously, I, I love food. <laughs> I do that very well. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah and I've proven, uh, I have some track record uh, from the past couple of years. But Chef Sam is, is great. He knows where my office is and he'll, he'll yeah, find right. me. And so, uh, did a lot of work with him on smoothies the last couple of years, getting the, the right mix. But it was to your point, and that's really where the question came from, the right mix of fruits, vegetables, and, and other items. As yeah. opposed to you know a commercial place where they might dump a bunch of sugar in that you know we both ethically right. but also nutritionally can't do that and so how do you get that mix right and I'm always impressed with what I taste and what I see right because we really don't want to do that anymore. right like it, we, right it's not just the guidelines it's, right yes yeah, it's and the, the tricky part is you know we're dealing with kids so it's also you know what they want but you know we need to try and take the things that we know that are good for them and try to like figure out how it'll be palatable for them. Right. Or sometimes just introduce it a couple times, you know, to get them past their initial barrier of, I don't eat broccoli, so, right. you know. <laughs> yeah, very good. And Victoria, for you, what are some challenges that you think the athletic department's facing and what are some ways you're working on them? Yeah, so similar to like what I aspire to do, female sports is definitely a challenge right now and trying to get the numbers up yeah. um, in that regards. And I, I, like I said before, we're probably gonna have to go and hit the youth programs, LSSC, and whatever else there's at, um, out there in the community. And then the other one is, you know, paying to play. Yeah. Um, that's not going to hold a kid back, right. but not everyone knows that. Right. Um, so I think that's really important for people to know, yeah. that you can still play a sport even if you can't afford to play it. Right. Um, I know it's an issue that comes up every, you know, a lot, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. That's not a concern, you know. If you guys, if anyone wants to play a sport, like they can at Amherst, and right. people need to know that. Yeah, no, I know. I sent an article last night. I mean, th both in terms of youth sports yeah. and then beyond that. That you know, even if cost isn't a barrier, there's a perception that cost is a yeah. barrier, and then you've got the same barrier, even if it's not mm -hmm. uh, actually what the barrier, uh, you know, functionally is. Yeah, exactly. So I think that communication piece is huge that you spoke about. Yeah. You know, I think the other thing I'll speak to a little bit, because you're just jumping in, is just we continue to um, work collaboratively with our Department of Public Works on our fields. Yeah. That, um, there was a major study done between the town and the district last year, and our fields, our athletic fields, are not in the best of shape. Um, my, I went out yesterday, and I think they're in the best shape since in my tenure here. Um, our, thanks to our DPW, I want to say that really publicly, for taking on. We purchased some water cannons and some different technology, uh, technological advancements that are helping our fields be better. And knock on wood, we don't have 99 degree temperatures coming yeah. up to sure. make our fields really brittle. Um, so the weather, uh, Mother Nature is helping us some as well. But I yeah. know long term, we're going to need to be doing a lot of work on um, what our plans are in the future for fields. And there's a study on our website, you know, that was done by Weston Sampson. But I think the next steps will be for the school committee and the community to say, you know, what can they afford and what do they value and, mm -hmm. and to take those next steps. So yeah, um, DPW is very responsive too. Yeah, they're yeah, fantastic. So they're doing great. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming in and sharing a bit of your background expertise and, and thoughts moving forward with, uh, with the viewers. And thank you for watching. And we'll be back soon with the next edition of Window into ARPS. And we will see you then. Thank you.